Hi folks, my name is Chris. Welcome to our Nintex Workflow Cloud Release Overview. This is for release 110, released on the 7th of October, making its way to tenancies by the 10th. Let's have a look at what we're going to go through really quickly. The new Microsoft Teams action, listing the members of a team and their associated properties. Uh, so how to get all that information from Teams into a workflow. So whether that's from an administrative point of view, reporting point of view, or a functionality point of view, you actually want to do something. Uh, with a list of uh, associated properties. The new My Nintex page, so it requested quite a bit, the ability to roll up the forms that you have access to through what used to be called the participant experience. So participant experience being all about tasks, adding the forms capability along with the tasks to My Nintex. And a change slash rebrand slash rename of the dashboard to the automate page and a roll up of your data sources, your connections, and your instances for those designers that have that capability. And workflow filtering, you'll now be able to workflow filter through the automate page by the start event types, whether you're starting with a component workflow and you wanna see all of them or a form or a SharePoint start event or a Dynamics or a Salesforce start event, uh, you'll be able to see that and be able to filter by that. So we don't sell PowerPoint and Nintex, so let's jump out of there and take a look at the tool itself. First and foremost, release notes. So jump on community.nintex.com, the ever expanding list of release notes, jump down to Nintex Workflow Cloud here, uh, release 110. It's gonna roll up everything that we've just talked about. A Couple of performance improvements as well. Uh, so improving the performance of the workflow list load uh, on that automate page and a couple of bug fixes as well. All right, so first things first, let's look at the new Microsoft Teams action the uh, list members of a team. Now I'm just gonna use workflow testing here. So I'm not gonna create a form front end. Let's just have a component workflow so I can use that. First thing I wanna do is grab that new action. So list members of a team, there we go. Drag that in. I'm gonna point this to uh, an existing connection from Microsoft Teams that I've created. So through the connections capability in Workflow Cloud, connecting using your username and password to that uh, Office 365 environment slash tenant slash instance, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I'm now going to be able to use these Office 365 associated actions. So the team can be variable driven. Uh, if I've got a variable declared elsewhere in the workflow, I'm going to be able to then reference that, or I can actually use it from the drop down. So we'll pick uh, MJ's awesome team. And what's the output object? So variable I need to create for my output object. So we'll add an object. And because I like to handle things in plain English, uh, it's easy to understand here. We'll go with an output called my Teams object. Alrighty, pop that in. First thing I wanna do is actually make sure that this workflow is pooling a list. So if there's more than one member of a team, I actually wanna know that, this, that I'm doing this right. So I'm gonna count the items in that collection first of all. So I'm gonna target the Teams members list and I'm just gonna put that in an integer variable. So I'll just call it count, um, pop that in. Now what I now wanna do is log that to an instance detail. So when it's running the test, I actually wanna see how many it's actually uh, pushing in there. So let's go to log and I'm simply gonna log two square brackets count, which is gonna use that number, whatever the integer comes back from Teams as, when it counts those collections, we'll pop that in. Now, if there is more than one, I'm gonna want all of those listed details. I'll go into the associated properties and pull something out of that. So I'll go loop for each, and let's loop for each uh, Microsoft Teams object collection is members. And what I wanna do is uh, just do a log. So just log to history list. I'm just gonna log something to the instance details for each just to make sure that it's working. And then I can obviously do some other stuff with those variables. I can get items from those collections uh, and I can actually use them in other parts of the stack. But what I just wanna do is make sure that it's working, make sure it's reporting back to the workflow. So that loop for each, each time it runs through the loop, I'm gonna grab from the object, the current item, and uh, let's just take display name, makes life easy. Okay, so what it's gonna do is list the members of a team, count the number of items that we've brought back in that collection, uh, log that integer, so 
so we should see that get popped in uh, and then if there's more than one we'll get a number of display names here so we'll save so we can test I'll call this release 101 seems intuitive enough 110 sorry and test All right, because I don't have a start form uh, and I don't have any start event variables, it's just gonna let me actually kick this off. I don't need any, because I'm not putting any into the workflow to do anything with. Uh, but if I was, then it'd allow me to free text type to, uh, to sort of simulate the start event from another system of record or from a form. So the test is now running. You'll see here, it's gonna do a quick refresh again in a few seconds. Uh, it's initiated that form. Now it's already done or started that first action, which was listing the members of the team. And in 10 seconds, it's finished, which is pretty quick. Uh, so list members of team executed and completed that. It counted the items in that collection and it then reported that back to workflow in my log two. So I should have two display names if the loop has worked correctly. So loop for each, log that to the instance. That looks like one display name and two display names. So they're the two members of my team, my MJ, a team that I've asked it to pull back. So that's the new action, uh, list members in of a team. And the other thing that I wanted to show you today was the My Nintex page. So up here, top right, you might just open that in a new tab. And that's essentially gonna be a roll up of not just the tasks as was the old participant experience, but also my forms. So any new Nintex workflow cloud workflow that has been created as a form front end, whether that's an external um, public anonymous form or an internal form that I have access to, uh, and then I have access to that. Now it is uh, listed alphabetically, but if I want to promote a form to the top, I click on my little gold star, uh, let's just refresh. And it's popped up to the top. So you can uh, highlight those important forms or remove them back to just alphabetical. Cool, so there were the things I want to show you today as part of release 110 making their way to your Nintex tenant by the 10th of October. If you do not have a Nintex tenant, shame on you. Jump up to Nintex.com start free trial in the top right. Uh, it's going to ask you for some details. It's going to also confirm that you are not a robot uh, and then start your free trial. So we'll provision a tenancy for you using the password we sent out to you and you can join in the fun. Thank you very much for listening. Looking forward to the next release video.